Welcome to Digital Asset News DGEN, where we take the more risky aspects of up and coming projects and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. So today what I want to talk to you about is a project called Steppin. This is a, uh, a new foray into the move to earn space. And if you've been in the crypto game or crypto space for any length of time, you know that there's been a natural evolution. First, we had uh, Bitcoin, which was the first cryptocurrency, and along came Ethereum, and we had smart contracts. And all of a sudden, we had these uh, things called NFTs, and that's kind of took over for a while. And then we had play-to-earn stuff like uh, Axie Infinity and different games. And now we're moving into a new category called M2E or Move to Earn. And one of the first ones is called Steppin. And we're going to take a look at exactly uh, what it is and will it make the cut. We're going to break it down and talk about the community, utility, and team, light paper, and tokenomics. We're going to go deep on the white paper. I'm going to show you how to actually sign up and actually use this thing so you can uh, potentially get paid. Plus, we'll take a look at the competition. And then finally, we'll go over the pros and cons, and we'll talk about a uh, couple of activation codes. And if you've been watching Steppin or following that for any length of time, you know that's a pretty hard thing to actually get those activation codes. But lucky for you today, We've got a couple. So let's break into it and talk about what it is and will it make the cut. And the first thing you probably ask yourself is, what's the price? How much is, is the token? I don't want you to think like that, but if you had to ask, here's the answer. So the step in price today, right now as it stands, is around $3. And people might say, ah, oh, it's, it's, it's already taken off, Rob. What are you talking about? Well, look, it's only been here since uh, March, March 10th or so. Today's April 21st. I think we got some time and I think we found this pretty early. So what I wanna do in this session is to break it down into making the cut. And for every project that's out there, you have to really peel back the layers to understand if this is gonna be a good one or it's something you wanna pass on. And these DGEN plays, just so you know, this is only five, three to 5% 5 of my portfolio. Most of it is just hodling. I'm just a, a dollar cost averager, but on other sides, I'd like to take a look at some, some plays that could potentially be big. I'm not telling you what to do. This is not financial advice. This is just a review of what I am doing. So what I do is I take a look at the cut. The community, how big is it? How much is it actually pushing this project forward? And is it gonna be sticking around for a while? Because community is what can make a project great or just leave it in the dust. I'll take a look at the utility. What does this do? And is it like a me too product? We'll take a look at the team behind it. What have they done? Which kind of would sometimes indicate where they could go. And lastly, we'll take a look at the tokenomics just to see if this is a project you might get dumped on. So we'll do all those things. And let's just break into, first of all, what the heck is Steppen? So Steppen in a nutshell is this. And all you do is you go to the app store and it's already available. It's got a working project, a prod, product right now. You can get on Apple, you can get on Android, doesn't matter, mobile. You go there, you download it, you pick an NFT. NFT is one of these sneakers and has different attributes like you may have known if you're, if you're familiar with the uh, uh, play to earn space. And that will give you so much different, these tokens called GST or green Satoshi tokens, doesn't matter. All it does is it tracks your walking. So the more that you walk, the more steps you take, the more you actually earn. There's two things that people liked. They don't want to be fat and they want to make money. So no one wants to be fat and broke. So with this product, they're trying to help you reverse or get you to the other side of that. So that is essentially what is stepping. And, and as far as like these, these sneakers here, um, there's, a, there's a, uh, a good page which breaks it all down, but it's better for you to see it. But every, just as, as a base all these different uh, NFTs or these sneakers that you get will give you different amounts of tokens that you earn based on how much you actually walk, jog, or run. And then, of course, we're going to go over this in the actual marketplace so you can actually see it. So that is essentially what it is and we'll make the cut. Now let's break it down, the community, the utility, which we kind of already talked about. And we'll also take a look at the team. So this is Stepan, S-T-E-P-N.com, link in the description. So first of all, as far as community goes, I like projects that already have people, individuals, groups built in. And that's why on this channel, we've talked about Gensu Kishi. It was a great, it is a great video, uh, game that already has uh, millions of, of gamers already built in. We talked about Fame MMA. And that already has a global reach as far as like uh, mixed martial arts and, and people who are interested in it. And with Steppen, they've got a pretty good start here. Uh, Discord, Discord members, 240,000. Twitter follows, 287,000. And this one has rapidly come across as one of the top 
I want to say in the top 50, maybe the top 65 cryptos, all of a sudden, here it is, because it's one of the first ones out there. Here's the roadmap, looking pretty good. We are already uh, 2022 Q1. Uh, the in-app trade function, hopefully that actually happens. In-app marketplace is already there. And they've actually done everything they're supposed to do. And they have actually a working product. And people are making between, depending on what kind of NFTs you get, between $100 and $500 per day walking. Is that sustainable? We'll talk about that in a second. And then here's the team. So the cut, the community, the utility, what does it do? And now let's talk about the team. And then we'll talk about the tokenomics. So here's... Jerry Wang, Yan Rong, Jessica Duan, and Ryan Turner. So who are these individuals? Well, first of all, this is Jerry. And Jerry, if you can see the screen so much, he has been, uh, of course, he's the founder of Steppen, and he's the co-founder of Falafel Games, October 2010, 2015. And if you take a look here at uh, who it says, he's had a decade in game development, operation marketing, ranked most downloaded game in the App Store. Okay, sounds pretty good. Looks like the guy can make a, a pretty good gamification. And I think that's why he moved into this space. Here's Jan Rong. And Jan, if you don't know, is blockchain incubator and token fund manager. So co-founder of Steppen, he was also an ambassador for Algorand. So he's been around the crypto game for quite some time since March, 2019. SA representative of Blockchain Australia, Dustio Rep South Australian Blockchain Association, and co-founder of Crypto SA. So we've got somebody who can do gamification and games and someone who has been around as far as crypto and digital assets. Now we got Jessica Duan and she, hopefully I said that right, chief strategy officer at Steppen by Satoshi Labs. Started off, she's a CSO, co-founder of Soka Design Studio, sales manager. So looks like she is a, the third cog in the wheel. And this guy right here, Ryan Turner, all these different cool things that you see right here, this is Ryan. And it looks like he's a pretty creative fellow. He's got a lot of different, uh, this, the color scheme looks good. I mean, as far as like uh, the NFTs that you see, he's the guy that makes this all happen. And then of course you've got the advisors. This was uh, Scott Donlap. He was uh, a VP at Adidas. This is uh, William Robinson, head of Accelerated Alliance, uh, Foles Ventures, Web3 Investors. So Deep Pockets and pretty good, which is also, speaking of which, Deep Pockets, Solana Ventures, Alameda Research, Six Man Ventures, M13, uh, also Binance. I don't know if you heard of them. Pretty big guys. So that is essentially the community, the utility, and the team. So let's just break it down and get into the nitty gritty, which we talk about the light paper, and then, of course, the tokenomics. So we know what Steppen is. The big thing I always ask myself is, how do these guys make money? That's really the first thing that always sticks out of me. Well, this is how they do it. They take small taxes from in-app activities or in-app uh, purchases, such as when you trade, shoe minting, shoe rental. Don't worry, we'll go over that. All assets in the Steppen app are owned by individual users, and majority of earnings in app are made by users. That sounds good. Carbon neutrality, a portion of Steppen's profit goes to buy carbon removal credit on the blockchain to combat climate change. First of all, what the heck is that? Carbon removal credits. I didn't understand what that was. So uh, we take a look here, the difference between carbon removal and carbon credits. There we go, let me move up. So carbon credits are emission reductions. Uh, one carbon credit represents one ton of CO2 emissions prevented. So like there's an example here of like solar cooking for refugees in Chad, healthy homes from Mexico. So better off you are as far as like reducing or having uh, no carbon effect, you get these carbon credits. So carbon removal is the act of taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So not, not that you're not producing it, but you're taking it out. How do you do that? You plant trees, direct air capture and storage, enhance watering, geoengineering approaches, blue carbon like mangroves, salt marshes, seagrasses, and algae, where if you plant those. And I guess for here, what they're trying to do is, look, we're allowing people to uh, walk all over the place, which is a lot better than, I guess, using a bunch of uh, earth destroyer gas cars. So we want those carbon neutrality. So great. And it actually helps the environment. So fine, sounds fantastic. Everybody can use it. Zero entry barrier. This is the interesting part. Steppen doesn't require people to own the NFT assets. Instead, they can rent them for free. Now they're usually get started with the earnings split later. So let me explain that real quick. So let me go over this on, on my phone. 
and we download the NFT and we transfer Solana and we do all the stuff we have to do, that can take a level of expertise that probably your grandma doesn't know how to do. But maybe she could just download the app and then just say, I want to, there's a big button that says, I want to rent a shoe. Then there's a 70 30 split as far as uh, what you get. I think that would be probably the ideal to get people in, but that's what they want to do. Unfortunately, it's not available just quite yet. So moving back, learn after earn. Non-crypto natives, let's say your grandmother or whoever, can earn before they learn how to use a decentralized wallet. This will also be their first step in the Web3 world. Pretty ambitious. So here's the token. There's two types. There's the GST. And just so you know, it's got unlimited supply. That sounds bad. And it may be, but there's a burn mechanism. We'll get to that. And here's the GMT. And the total supply is six billion. And that's the one that we were talking about right here, just so you know. So uh, tokenomics, you can buy rent, 30% to renter, 70% to owner. This is if you rent them out. If you buy it, you get the governance token and the unlimited supply of the GST. But if you're renting, that's what you get. So da da da. And then uh, here's the token burning. So even though that this GST token is unlimited supply, which I gotta be honest, it doesn't sound too appealing. They do burn it if there's a sneaker repair, sneaker sockets unlocking, level up. There's a customization fee, that's the governance token. Level up sneakers, shoe mincing, upgrade gems. We'll talk about stuff in a second. Now we get the token distribution. And people always ask me, they go, so what will be considered a bad token distribution? I'll tell you exactly what a bad token distribution is. So see that thing that says a private sale right there? or a launch pad sale, 16.3 and 7%. So you're looking at 23.3%, right? That's about, that's a good chunk, I must admit. 23%, 16, 17, 20. That's a, that's a quarter. And that's a quarter in the hands of a lot of people who got that token really cheap. So if you're looking at a token distribution, not the most fantastic that I'd ever seen. So uh, it remains to be seen how much people dump on it. Remember, there's always lockup periods. That's one of the things. However, moving earn is about a third. You've also got uh, ecosystem or the treasury, which gets locked up as well. That's pretty good. Then you got the advisors, two and a half percent. So actually, I'll have you put this, this, and this. It's really a, really a quarter. Then you also got the team. 14% goes the team. And that could be, they could, they could pay for upgrades and things like that. I got to tell you, uh, not the most fantastic tokenomics I've ever seen, but not the absolute worst. So take that as you will. But this is where it gets really important. Lockups. So you see how this goes up and to the right to 100%? Because if there was no lockup periods, all these people right here, the private sale, and the Binance Launchpad sale, and then of course the advisors, if there was no lockup period, as soon as this hit centralized exchanges, they would just dump it. A lot of them would dump it because a lot of people are just like, I don't really care. However, when you have lockup periods, it pretty much forces you or lets you understand this is a good project and we want you to not dump on everybody. So here's what we got. So in the very beginning, let's see, let's move it to April. That's where we're at right now. And you can see the percentages change. So like in April, 2023, the private sale, 2% gets unlocked. Launchpad sale 7, team 0 0.9, advisor 0 0.3, treasury to 7.2, and moving earn 3.8. So not a ton, and it really doesn't start picking up, well, actually, for quite some time. Because this is, oh, I take that back. This is the 2023. Let me go back all the way to April. Oh, wow. Okay, this is different. Private sale, none. Launchpad sale, 7. And then 0, 0, 3.6. So I like that lockup. But as you see, as it goes to the right, Still doesn't have that many. I like that lockup. So what does this mean? Well, a lot of these people that are probably bought into it, they can't really do too much dumping until around, oh, it depends, July 2023, about a year from now. So not too bad. However, as time moves on, and I think the price goes way, way up, I don't think you're going to have that problem. So tokenomics, not the greatest as far as like where it goes. That's why we look at everything. And we take a look and go, you know what? Lockup periods aren't too bad. Okay, so that takes care of the, of, uh, the tokenomics themselves and what they would be considered the light paper. Let me see here, make sure roadmap. Yeah, 
So let's go into what I call going deep on the white paper and what's going on. So first things first, let's get into it. To get started, you download the app, sign up for the for Steppen, create a wallet, transfer soul, purchase a sneaker. Sounds easy, right? Sounds easy enough. Why don't we take a look at how that looks in an actual real phone? So let me stop this. Let me share another screen. And let's see. So I've already downloaded the app itself. So we go over here, click on Steppen. This is the Steppen app. And once you download it from this, the app store, link will be in the description for Android or iOS, uh, it's gonna ask you for an activation code. Thankfully, uh, the fine team over at uh, Token Metrics gave me their activation codes and they're the ones that actually uh, sent this project over to me and I talked to them. I said, this is pretty good. This is a pretty good project. I'll take a look at it. So I wanna give them the shout out, Token Metrics, thanks so much. And then uh, we'll get to uh, all the other things we're doing with Token Metrics. So we're right here, you get the activation code. This is the first thing you're gonna see. And you see like these, you got these, let me get rid of this banner. We don't need this right now. So see down here, you got that running man on the lower left-hand side. Then you got the shoes. I got no shoes. Then you got the rankings. I haven't really done much as far as like ranking because it's coming soon. Then also, here's all, of course, the different uh, shoes that you can get. And see over here, it says lowest price. You can go to highest price or latest. Let's go to the highest price shoe. The highest price shoe right now is a boatload of Solana. 10,000 Solana. I don't have that. I don't know if you do. So I'm going to go to lowest price. And just so you know, the lowest price is going to give you the, obviously the best one, but it gives you a little, little baseline of where to go. So it's pretty good ones here. And if we take, see how it says mint and level five, and mint two, level five, mint, mint. So you can mint other, other shoes, two of them. And there's the different levels that you can get. Let's go with this looks snazzy, and I'm a walker, so I'm gonna pick 11, this one for 11.7. And then, see right here, it's got efficiency, luck, comfort, and resilience. You can level those up later on, and that's that whole burning tokenomics part of the GST. And you can even see, like, this is minted from this shoe and that shoe, and so on and so forth. So then, of course, there's all these different uh, levels here, or these little icons which of course you can level up. But one of the things, and we'll get into it, is resilience. As you, as you move and use this NFT, it will actually break down. So I need 11.7 Solana. See where it says buy now right there? Well, guess what? On the upper right-hand corner, see right there? I've got nothing. I've got nothing in my wallet. Let me actually put in my code. Okay, this is how much I got, zero, zero, zero. And see right there in the middle where it says zero soul, seven SNH, that's the public key. If you wanna use that in semi Solana, go right ahead. But what I need to do is I need to transfer some Solana from another wallet into here. So where do I get Solana? Well, I can get it in a lot of different places, uh, but we need it to be transferred. So the easiest place in the United States, you could probably use Binance, I don't know if it's listed there, but I'm just gonna use Coinbase. So. This is the address. I'm going to copy this real quick. Copy successful. Then I'm going to open. So then I'm going to open da, 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 Coinbase. And here's my whopping 4,500 bucks. I don't keep a lot of crypto on the exchanges, especially Coinbase, but sure. And I want to show this to you because if you click on assets, the bottom corner there, I've got enough Solana right now. I've got 18.3. That's pretty good. I can transfer it. But I don't know. I don't know if you knew this, but you know you can swap crypto within the app that is Coinbase, and there's no fees. Check this out. See where it says Loop Ring? If I click on Loop Ring, and I click on Trade right there, big blue button, and it says I can buy Loop Ring, sell Loop Ring, or convert Loop Ring to another crypto. That's pretty cool. Let me convert it. So it says Loop Ring to Solana. If you click on Solana, you can again pick whichever one that you actually want to. You can. Transfer to Ethereum, Bitcoin, I mean, everything that you really want to, right? But I'm gonna pick Solana. And let's just do max. Why not? 225 bucks, let's live dangerously. So I'm gonna pay for the loop ring. One loop ring is 0 .00, blah, 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 blah. The Coinbase fee that I want you to notice, 0, 0.0, that's not bad. Let's convert now. 
and we'll send you an email when you update. So it takes a couple minutes, but that's about it. So just so you know, that's an option for you. I know like other places will say, you can do swaps in the app. Can't do it there. Coinbase can, that's pretty cool. All right, so here under the, see right there where it says just Solana. I'm gonna click on Solana. And then upper right-hand corner, there's a QR code or that little arrow on the upper right-hand. I'm gonna click on that. And every every crypto wallet or exchange is pretty much the same. There's always some kind of like send option, receive option, something like that. You have to find it for whatever different uh, wallet that you actually have. So what's the amount that I wanna send over? Well, for this one, I think it was around 12. I was gonna, it was like 11.7, right? Let's just send over 12. Whoops, I wanna transfer that. 12 Solana, which is 1200 bucks. Nothing to sneeze at, which is kind of weird, right? I'm buying a fake NFT or a fake uh, shoe, which is an NFT. Uh, continue. And it's going to ask me, what's, what, where do you want to send it? And it's already on my clipboard, so I'm going to click there. I will tell you this. Usually, usually what I do is I send a, a test transaction of just like 20 bucks, 50 bucks, just to make things uh, work. But I've been testing this uh, before the video and it worked out okay. So I'm gonna, I feel okay. One thing I will recommend though, for this recipient, this wallet that I just uh, just pasted in there, I would highly recommend you double check, which I'm gonna do right now. So let me, let me slip back. The last ones are 285J, all right. And here, yeah, 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 285J. So. Looks to be good, preview the send. And I'd also like to uh, check the very first ones. And now it's asking for the two-step verification. I will just blank this out. And voila, you have successfully sent 12 soul. This transaction just takes a few seconds. Let's see if they're right. I don't think they're gonna do it that much in my time. We'll see how, wow. Okay, that was fast. So I take my back. Uh, it took uh, about 10 seconds. So wow, Solana is <laughs> super fast. Good luck doing that with Ethereum. Okay, so now I have 12 Solana, right? That's pretty good. Let's go back. Spending, back, back. This is a nice one. Let's buy this. So I'm gonna click on buy now. All right, Walker, moving one to six kilometers an hour to earn. Yeah, that's about me. So I'm gonna confirm. And I forgot to do one part. Insufficient soul and spending accounts. So I need to transfer from my wallet to my spending account. So let's see, let's transfer all. <sighs> confirm transfer. You will transfer, yes, confirm. And voila, now I have it in my spending account. And uh, I cut out all the rest of the stuff, but just so you know that when I went from wallet to the spending account, it didn't show anything. So I had to shut the actual app down and then restart it, and now here it is. So just so you know if that happens to you, just shut your, your app down and it works, hopefully. All right, so now let's go back and let's take a look at uh, the shoes again because I just lost them. All right, so here we go from low to high. Let's see. Well, now that I got 12, maybe I want to upgrade to something better. Eh, not that one. This is a good one. One says uh, Walker. Let's just do with this one. 11.8 soul. Sure. So we click on this guy. And level five. Ooh, shoe mints two out of seven. Here's the attributes. Efficiency. Luck. It's really good. Comfort and resilience. So it's going to ask me. 11.8. You want to buy now? Sure. Buy now. Again, Walker, durability, 100 out of 100. Hopefully this will last, two out of seven, and confirm. Confirm, purchased, bing, bang, boom, and we're done. So let's take a look and see if it's actually where it's supposed to be. And there it is. So I've got sneakers, shoebox, talk about in a second. Gems, none, badges, none, sneakers, here we are. And this is where we get to the power up part. So again, NFTs and all the different things you wanna power up, sure, check it out. I got 20 different points. So you can level up all these things if you want to, and that'll give you more money or more of the tokens, which you can transfer into money and go right ahead. So again, see that you got level up down here. Let's see what happens. Ah, so you level up by, that's pretty cool. Six of those um, green Satoshi tokens. Time, you've got a lot of about hours. Cancel. Repair, nothing to repair. Mint, the sneaker shooting function is not available. Sell, lease. And let's see if I can lease them. Lease is coming soon and transfer. So this is what it is. And what it's gonna do with your phone, it just tags into your GPS. It checks you out where you're walking and that's what it goes. So that is in a nutshell, uh, how to actually do it. So now let's just get into the white paper itself.
So we all did this. Download the step in, sign up, create a new wallet, transfer sold, purchase sneaker, did all that stuff. After the purchase of a sneaker, energy will restore at a rate of 25% every six hours. Okay. So I'm not going to be walking that much, but all right. Let's go over what they call the game modes. So really there's two modes and one's here, one's under development. Solo mode, which is what we are right now. Users are equipped with NFT sneakers that earn tokens by moving. Energy is needed to earn those GSTs. One energy equals five minutes. So every five minutes that you move, you get one of those tokens. Uh, this only starts replenishing after users acquire an NFT sneaker, which we just did. To begin using, uh, users select a sneaker of the choice and press start. Back in the actual app, to get this thing going, here it was, very bottom, you've got, so see the little running man icon in the bottom left-hand corner? So we click on that, that's the only shoe that we got. And then we'll click on start. You cannot earn token with zero energy continue. Confirm. Step and like to access your activity and fitness motion, sure. <laughs> and now it gets to get the step in. And that's essentially what happens. I'm going to pause this because I'm not doing anything right now. So let's jump back to the actual screen so you know what I'm talking about. So let's just say, for instance, that you want to try to game the system. There's this thing called moonwalking. This will be shown if the app detects a weak GPS internet signal, the user is not organically moving, i.e. you strap it to your dog or you put on a scooter and go around. No GST will be earned while moonwalking. I'm Curious to see if they can actually keep that up and actually uh, dis distinguish between you and if you strap it onto your dog. Who knows? GST GMT will pay out for every minute of movement, which is dependent on four factors. The type of sneaker, obviously the higher the NFT value, the probably the more that you get. Sneakers efficiency, higher the efficiency, the more of the tokens earned per minute. Users can only earn GST from level 0 to 29, which mine, as you remember, was like, I think level five. At level 30, Users can choose to stay earning the uh, green Satoshi token or switch to the governance token, which is GMT, which is the one uh, that we just talked about or is listed right here. So, and then speed of movement. To maximize earnings, users should keep within the optimal speed range of their respective sneaker. Whenever a user falls below or above the range, their earnings will be reduced by 90%. Wow. Once energy is depleted, users stop earning tokens. And then there's the mystery box. And this is the gamification of, of Stepin. Mystery box is a loot box randomly drops while you're moving in solo mode. It contains gems. Each user has four mystery box slots. Great. So that's the solo mode. Here's the marathon mode. And that's under development. Hasn't come on yet. Marathon mode user, users need to register under the marathon tab at least 24 hours prior to commencement. You got a weekly or a monthly marathon. Uh, the weekly one is held weekly and lasts for the whole weeks. You can participate in 2.5, 5, a 5 kilo or 7.5 kilo marathons. The other one's 5, 10, and 15. So again, a lot of different gamifications to keep people coming back for it. That's good. Now let's take a look at uh, the sneakers themselves and, of course, all those attributes that we saw. So the efficiency, uh, solo mode. Uh, in solo mode, having a higher efficiency will result in better earnings. Obviously, the more you got and the more tokens you get. Luck, luck determines the frequency and quality of a mystery box drop. So sometimes you get these mystery boxes and it contains, I don't know, a thousand GST. So the, the more lucky you are is the more you actually potentially get more of. Uh, comfort, this is uh, under development and resiliency. Resilience affects the decay rate of durability. The higher resilience will result in a slower decay. So what that means is, even if you bought that NFT for 10,000 Solana, at some point it's going to decay and it's not going to work. So you can't actually earn more tokens. You have to keep putting the GST or GMT into those, into those NFTs to continue to earn yield. Now, you could probably earn a ton of yield on that and who knows what the price is, but this is where it comes from is how they earn money, remember? On their marketplace, and of course they, they, they burn these tokens, is if you have to upgrade if you have to transfer, if you have to do anything with the NFT, that's where they make money and that's where it comes to getting more out of the game. So that's that part. Some might like it. I think it, 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 uh, it gives it to an interesting aspect of the game itself. So there's gems, there's four types, yellow, blue, red, purple, efficiency, luck, comfort, resilience. Of course, you can upgrade those, good enough. And this is one called shoe minting. And this is just like what I, but I showed you, uh, you could you could mint two of those shoes that we got. Shoe minting event or SME is used when 
when users use two sneakers they own as a blueprint to breed producing a shoe box in the process. So I need another, I need another uh, NFT. Two sneakers will be called vintages. Users can select a sneaker by hitting the mint tab. They can breed, blah, blah, blah. Users can perform a maximum of seven shoe minting event, I guess. This, so that's interesting. And then of course it goes uh, into deep, into GameFi, SocialFi, and so on and so forth. And then also the big thing for me is what I would call uh, the marketplace, the rental system. And this makes sense. Once they get this part, I think it'll change a lot of things. Because what I just talked about was kind of complex for a lot of people. Definitely not your grandma. But if you could have a rental system, and they say here, the main barrier we're faced to onboarding users into a crypto game is the complexity. Well, no kidding. This starts with creating an exchange account, converting fiat to crypto, navigating Web3 with a decentralized wallet. Step and aims to breach this barrier by introducing a rental system. You can offer a, a lease system and get started as easy as downloading the game and then just clicking a button and say, I want to rent this sneaker. And then, of course, it's that 70-30 split. So I can see the appeal to the game. And, of course, a lot of the gains, the majority of the gains, not the majority, but a good portion, are the early adopters. And that's really uh, what it comes down to. So now that we know that, let's take a look at the competition, uh, exactly uh, what is potentially out there. So when we take a look at the stuff that's out there, here's one that just pops up. And again, this move to earn is, a, is an incredibly new space that's come about, but they've already got some competition. This one's called Sweatcoin. And remember when we talked about the cut, the community? See, Sweatcoin's been around for three years already, and they already have 64 million users and 100 million plus predicted users coming because you could download it right now and just get these tokens, which aren't crypto tokens. And you can use that into buying these different uh, products that they pair with different companies uh, like, a, like Bose, like any kind of like some different food products and some different uh, outerwear and stuff like that. And they've already got it pretty much built in. So Sweatcoin looks pretty good. And once they once they launch, you can go to Android and iOS and you can, I've been using it for a couple of days now, um, but they are moving into the crypto space. And when you go to CoinGecko and try to type in Sweatcoin, it takes you to Sweat Economy. And again, um, 64 million users, 100 million. And this summer, so every Sweatcoin that's been produced, because like on one shuffling that I do, one walk, I'll learn like 20 or 30 different coins. And they're gonna get those coins and for every single one that's ever been created over the last three years, again, this was an app that before crypto, they're going to put that into Sweatcoin. So that's one of them. And this one looks very interesting. This one's called Step.app, where it's augmented reality. I don't know how they're going to work that out on those glasses or whatnot. And you're going to be able to use, use that to do certain functions. It's almost like play to earn and move to earn all rolled into one. So that's the competition. But right now, uh, this one, I don't know if it's even out. I know Sweatcoin isn't out until uh, late summer or maybe midsummer. So right now, Steppen is the one. So let's talk about the pros and the cons. So first of all, the pros, obviously, it's one of the first movers. And when you get first mover advantage, you get a lot of capitalization. Now, not to say that they're not, they're not the first or the very first ones, but they are one of the first and it gives them an advantage over other ones that are coming in. Second one is gamification of fitness. I know a lot of people want to get into shape, but it sucks. I'll be honest with you. But uh, if you can say, hey, I want to get into shape by walking, and I can also get paid for that, I'm going to do that. So for gamification fitness, this is fantastic. And then the pros, shoe repair and resilience. And I know when you, when you saw that, you're like, well, that sucks. But think of it this way. If you got those people in the tokenomics, and they, and they purchase a ton of 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 the GMT token, they bought a bunch of those NFTs and there was no shoe repair, they could just leech off the system forever. So for me, I kind of feel like there's a finite time that these whales can actually collect. Now, uh, it is true that they have a, also their first mover advantage, so we'll see how it works out in the long run, but if there was no shoe repair, it would just be the people that got there first. Fourth, they have a working product, which is not what I can say for a lot of different, different uh, uh, projects out there. So congratulations to these guys for actually uh, having a, a trajectory and following it. 
Also, tokenomics and lockups are acceptable. Again, when you take a look at the, at the, the tokenomics, though, it didn't look too great, but those lockups really kind of push it into the acceptable or even good range. And then lastly, they got some big backing with some pretty big names. And they were part of the uh, Solana hackathon. Then they came in like in the top three or four. So they are being pushed by some pretty big people. Now let's talk about the cons. So the cons themselves is this. The first one is the cost to participate. You saw the most expensive one. That was pricey. And I'm sure they're making a lot, but it doesn't mean you have to have a lot. And who knows what the one that I bought for 11.8 Solana will be worth in the near future as I start using it. Because I will tell you this, I'm probably going to use that one and I'm probably going to use Sweatcoin together. I wonder if I can use them both together and just like double dip. That'd be interesting. The second one is the sustainability. I don't know how sustainable it is to start to pay out as time goes on. The only way it works is if more people come in. Because if more people don't come in, I don't think that actually how it is. However, that does lead me to back to the part about the shoe repair and resilience. Because if you got to keep paying for it, maybe you don't need a lot of people to come in because you got the same people who are paying for those shoe repairs. But again, you're going to need some more people. Fourth, the ease of use. We just saw how complex it can be. Once they get it into the, into the fact of where they can actually just loan them out, that will be a game changer. Also, the GST unlimited supply. There is a burn mechanism, and I can see why they did it, but unlimited supply, it's not always the greatest thing of all time. And I never really appreciated uh, an unlimited supply. I like finite, because that makes things work, but it is what it is. And then lastly is competition, uh, bigger built-in communities like the ones we just saw. But that's essentially what we have as far as the pros and cons. And lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, tweet this out uh, at the conclusion of this video. What I'm going to do is I'll edit this video. Then I'm gonna, I have this tweet ready to go. And all you got to do is this. So enter for a chance to win two, maybe three activation codes. I got to talk to the guys over there at Tokenomics or Token Metrics. Uh, all you got to do is four things. First, you watch the video. Congratulations. Second of all, or third of all, or second of all, comment below. Just say, hey, I want to win or hey, this is great. Third of all, I want you to follow us at News Asset on Twitter, links in the description. And also want you to follow at Token Metrics Inc, link in the description as well. We'll pick a one in the next 24 hours from the day that this video is released. And just so you know, Token Metrics, it's a pretty great platform where they take a lot of information, they condense it as much as, as they possibly can. And you can kind of take a look at what is the potential big winners and losers that are out there. There's a, uh, a sign up, there's a link in the description looks just like this. And of course, they're taking 25% off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And for everybody that signs up, they're going to help out with their carbon footprint by planting a tree. So you can also check this out. Links in the description and we go from there. So I know that's a lot of things to cover, but I feel like uh, it was necessary, especially with this new platform. I think Move to Earn could be fantastic. The real question is, which one's going to be the big winner? And you always take a look at the pros and cons. So that's it. So look, if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about here are very risky, and this is not financial advice, just financial opinion. So just prepared to, if you're gonna go this way, just do more of your own research. This would just be the starting point. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.